Talk a little bit about the, the structure here, the legs. It's mm. not all that unusual to have crooked legs on a foal. Uh, how do you know that yeah, it's just a part of the process, mm. or how do you know there's a serious problem here that needs to be addressed? Yeah, well, sometimes sometimes you don't, and it takes uh, repeated exams and careful examination. Um, you know, all, all foals, they, they've lived in an aquatic environment for 330 days, right. and so now they come out on terra firma and start loading their limbs, and they're going to look weak, and they're going to have some... Uh, flexor laxity or tendon laxity. They also, their limbs should not be straight. Uh, they're not gonna look like a mature horse at this point. So most foals are a bit knock-kneed, knock a little bit like Bambi when they come out. Um, and they also may have some other deformities where they're, where they're windswept or look like they've been pushed to one side. The right leg is bow-legged and the left front leg might be, uh, uh, might be knock-kneed. Um, those can be caused by uterine malposition, dismaturity of the foal, even though it has the proper gestational length that may not have matured properly and your veterinary can help you determine those things. Um, sometimes they're born with, uh, because of their positioning, they're actually born with serious uh, uh, deformities that may preclude them from, from being athletic, even at that young age where the bones didn't form normally. That's unusual, but can happen. Um, the, the, despite having the, the, that there may be uh, obvious abnormalities or conformational abnorm abnormalities at birth, the good news is foals are like plastic. They change quickly. And if you have the right intervention or sometimes lack of intervention that you know what not to deal or, or, or deal with, you're going to be okay. Now, the other um, issue to consider is injury during foaling. And, and Dr. Valla pointed that out with the fractured ribs and ruptured bladder. And here's another example of an injury that can occur during foaling. And you, and you may not be aware of this happening. This is a really ruptured hamstring in a foal. And what, the, what happens is their hind leg will be caught underneath them, as you see in this example. Um, and instead, even though the foal's in a relative, in, in a normal position from the front end, the hind leg's not in the right spot. And so when this foal is pulled, it's going to put tension on the back of the, of the, of the uh, muscles in the, in the back of the thigh and actually rupture the muscle, sometimes completely, sometimes half. There's two heads to that muscle. And so the, in the picture of the bottom left is a foal uh, in a stall, and you can see how we can flex the hock on this foal and extend the stifle, and that's not normal. Foals have... Horses have what's called a reciprocal apparatus, which prevents that from happening. You and I can do that, but a foal can't do that. That looks like a tough injury. I mean, it, can that be overcome, doctor? It's a, it's a difficult injury, but fortunately it can be overcome. And we, we were very interested in this particular problem. One of our, our doctors, Dr. Travis Tull, a few years ago, looked at about 38 or 40 consecutive cases at our hospital. And um, here's a video of one of those cases where um, that you can you can see the right hind limb in this foal. It's being examined by Dr. Woody, who's one of our uh, other surgeons at Root and Riddle. And it, the problem is right where his hand is right there, there's an injury to the gastroc um, uh, a muscle. And you can see the left hind limb. He can support his weight, but not the right hind limb. And this is another one of the cases uh, two years later after injury. And you can see the horse performing in a workout prior to sale. So 80% uh, of our horses became normal uh, with treatment. And treatment might be um, sometimes it's just stall confinement, but most of them got some bandaging or what's called a sleeve cast, which is a cast that goes from below their stifle to above their, above their fetlock to support them for a week to 10 days. And just with recognizing the problem, despite, uh, uh, early intervention, careful application of these devices, you can have a normal animal. When you're done, it would be very disappointing to an owner right. to wait for the, you know, it might be the breeding of a lifetime and then have this injury and be devastated, but, but at least you know there's a, a way to help them. Proper care can get you through that. Yes, that that's great to know. Yeah. Katie, from the standpoint of these deformities, uh, can nutrition play a significant role?